Nearly two centuries after the Targaryen conquest of Westeros, the death of King Viserys II led to the coronation of his son, Aegon IV, known as the Unworthy, regarded by many as the worst monarch in their history. Among the numerous harmful decisions made throughout his reign, one of the most destructive came while he lay on his deathbed, when he legitimized all his bastard children, thereby laying the foundation for conflict over the succession. Although Prince Daeron Targaryen was the eldest son and recognized heir who next sat the Iron Throne, his reign was divisive, angering those who lost loved ones in the Dornish Wars by making peace with their southern neighbor. Further, after so many years of rule, a number of houses, large and small, had grievances against the Targaryens and sought an alternative, rallying behind the king's half-brother Daemon Waters, one of the great bastards sired by Aegon IV and his mistresses of noble birth. A charming, charismatic, honorable, and valiant warrior, Daemon was beloved by friends and respected by enemies, earning his knighthood at the age of 12 after achieving victory in a squire's tourney. His father the king was so impressed with his performance that day, that before the entire court, he gifted him the Valyrian steel sword, Blackfire, once wielded by Aegon the Conqueror, said to be the weapon of the king. As a result of this gift, and Daemon's ever-burgeoning reputation, many came to see him as the chosen heir to the Iron Throne, naming him the king who bore the sword. Adopting the name Daemon Blackfire, he gained many followers, but his most fervent support came from his half-brother Aegor Rivers, another of the great bastards, who had a deep personal hatred for their other sibling, Brynden Rivers, who served as Hand of the King for Daeron II. By 196 AC, the conflict at last erupted into the first Blackfire Rebellion, culminating in the Battle of the Redgrass Field, where Daemon Blackfire famously defeated Sir Gwain Corbray after an hour-long duel. Due to the king's sense of honor, he could not allow such a worthy foe to pass away, and so ordered that his opponent be taken off the battlefield and his wounds treated. However, this act of chivalry proved his downfall, as it gave time for the archer company of Brynden Rivers to rain fire arrows upon them, killing Daemon Blackfire as well as his eldest sons, Aegon and Aemon. Rallying the remnants of the Blackfire army, Aegor Rivers, also known as Bittersteel, cut a bloody path to reach Brynden Rivers, defeating him in a duel and taking out his eye before he fled. With no more hope of victory, Bittersteel led a retreat, securing the sword Blackfire as well as Daemon's surviving sons and boarded ships to seek refuge in Essos. Though over 10,000 men died in the battle, King Daron II and House Targaryen defeated the rebellion, but it would not be the last time they faced this threat, as Aegor Rivers remained loyal to the memory of his brother Daemon and refused to admit defeat, using their time as exiles to settle House Blackfire in Tyrosh and prepare for their next attempt to take the Iron Throne. After serving a year with the Second Sons, Bittersteel needed a long-term way to earn coin, sustain their forces, and avoid losing men to mercenary groups, and so formed the Golden Company, earning a reputation for having thousands of well-trained, disciplined soldiers who never break a contract, with their famous motto announcing our word is as good as gold. Yet just as they were true to their word, they expected the same from their employers, sacking the city of Kohor when they refused to honor a contract. Although Bittersteel and the Golden Company did not support Daemon Blackfire II in the Second Blackfire Rebellion of 212 AC, it was because they instead backed his younger brother, Hagon I, launching the Third Blackfire Rebellion in 219 AC. Suffering another defeat, Hagon was dishonorably killed after surrendering, while Aegor Rivers was captured alive and taken to the capital, where many advocated for his execution. But the elderly king, Aerys I, chose mercy and sent him to the Night's Watch, unaware that the Golden Company remained loyal to Bittersteel, rescuing their leader as he sailed north and taking him to Tyrosh, where they continued their campaign by crowning Hagon's son, Daemon Blackfire III, as the true king of Westeros. In 236 AC, Aegor Rivers made his final attempt to overthrow House Targaryen, leading the Golden Company in the Fourth Blackfire Rebellion by landing at Massey's Hook in the Crownlands. Yet they proved unable to win local support for their cause, and were thoroughly defeated in the Battle of Wendwater Bridge, where Sir Duncan the Tall killed Daemon Blackfire III in single combat. After the death of the king, Aegor Rivers once again retreated to Essos with the Golden Company, where he died a few years later fighting in the disputed lands. While lying on his deathbed, Aegor Rivers ordered that upon his passing, the Golden Company should boil the flesh from his skull, dip it in gold, and carry it as their banner when they launched their final invasion of Westeros to take the Iron Throne for House Blackfire. 
His loyal warriors then obeyed his command and did the same for future captain generals, preserving their golden skulls upon pikes, while also staying true to the legacy of their founder by remaining staunch supporters of House Blackfire and through their war cry, beneath the gold, the bitter steel. Over the next few decades, the Golden Company continued to serve as a brotherhood of Westerosi exiles and the Sons of Exiles, fighting in various battles across the free cities, though much of their time was spent in the disputed lands, growing rich from their endless wars. By 258 AC, the last of the male line of House Blackfire fought a duel to the death over leadership of the Golden Company, with Meles the Monstrous emerging victorious over his cousin Damon Blackfire. Meles then allied himself with a group of ambitious merchants and pirates to invade Tyrosh, establishing the Stepstones as a base of operation for their invasion of Westeros. However, wise King Jaehaerys II was aware of their plans and launched a preemptive strike in 260 AC, beginning the Fifth Blackfire Rebellion, also known as the War of the Nine Penny Kings. Among the many Westerosi warriors who distinguished themselves in battle, none could claim greater glory than young Barristan Selmy, who cut a bloody path through the Golden Company to reach Meles the Monstrous, slaying him in single combat. Though the Golden Company were no longer led by House Blackfire, they continued to honor the traditions of the past and still considered themselves a company of Westerosi exiles, with the primary goal of one day returning to their homeland. After the defeat of House Targaryen in Robert's Rebellion, the son of the murdered king, Prince Viserys, feasted the Golden Company while living as an exile in Essos, hoping to win their support, but they instead laughed in his face and refused. However, over a decade later, as Westeros tore itself apart in the War of the Five Kings, their attitude changed even at the cost of their reputation, breaking a contract for the first time in their history in order to support the plan of Illyrio Mopatis, a wealthy merchant from Pentos who wanted to arrange a marriage alliance between Aegon Targaryen, the son of Crown Prince Rhaegar who they claim was saved as a baby, and Daenerys Targaryen, the younger sister of Rhaegar and Viserys, who hatched three dragons during her time in the East and was conquering Slaver's Bay. Though the legitimacy of this Aegon Targaryen was uncertain, he was an intelligent, honorable, and valiant young warrior who, with the aid of his guardian John Cunnington, won the loyalty of the Golden Company. Their faith in the boy was so profound that in 300 AC, after learning Daenerys was staying in the east to rule as Queen of Meereen, they abandoned Illyrio's marriage plan and sailed directly for Westeros to proclaim Aegon Targaryen as king. After encountering a storm that scattered their forces, the Golden Company began their invasion, capturing Griffin's Roost, Crow's Nest, Rainhouse, Greenstone, Mistwood, Tarth, and half the Stepstones, before Aegon personally led them in the conquest of Storm's End. Under the command of Harry Strickland, the Golden Company at this time consisted of 10,000 warriors, including 500 knights, each with three horses, mounted squires, two dozen elephants, and a thousand archers wielding crossbows, double curved bows, and long bows, alongside 50 Summer Islanders with bows of Goldenheart, a famed wood from their homeland. And while it would appear that the entirety of this army committed itself to House Targaryen, thereby betraying the legacy of Bittersteel and Daemon Blackfire, there are some who believe this was all just an elaborate deception in order to launch the Sixth Blackfire Rebellion in secret. This speculation came from the idea that the female line of House Blackfire may have continued beyond the death of Meles the Monstrous, and that Illyrio Mopatis may have married a Blackfire descendant in his wife Sarah, who in turn may have given birth to a son they named Aegon. With the help of Illyrio's friend, Varys the Spider, and the loyalist, John Cunnington, who genuinely believed the boy was a Targaryen, Aegon was trained to be a courageous, compassionate, and wise king, though he too was deceived about his parentage, thereby giving Varys and Illyrio a better chance of securing the support of Westerosi lords by having a valid claim for young Aegon's legitimacy. Further support for this theory came from the contract signed between Illyrio Mopatis and the Golden Company many years earlier when they were under the leadership of Miles Blackheart Toyne, a descendant of House Toyne who lost their lands and power to House Targaryen during the reign of Aegon IV. Toyne's deep hatred for Aegon's descendants, coupled with the Golden Company's history of supporting House Blackfire, made it unlikely they would want a Targaryen on the throne. In addition, there are some who believe Illyrio Mopatis was in possession of the Valyrian steel sword Blackfire and would one day bestow it upon Aegon.
Love Game of Thrones? Then be sure to check out the new book, The Thrones Effect, written by a number of respected A Song of Ice and Fire YouTubers, including GOT Academy, Because Geek, Secrets of the Citadel, Grey Area, Ideas of Ice and Fire, History of Westeros, and Smokescreen, with Chapter 5, titled Eye of the Beholder, written by Civilization X, exploring the various ways the characters and story can be interpreted, as well as how the audience reacted to their decisions. If interested, click on the link in the description box below, where The Thrones Effect is available as a physical copy, ebook, and audiobook. A special thanks to all those who contribute to Civilization X, like Lionel Storm, the Warhammer of Lightning, Sir Bob of the Buoy, Mamuru the Obscured Hermit Alchemist, and Dela Cruz the Freed. If you'd like to help Civilization X, click on the Patreon link, and please be sure to like, subscribe, and turn on notifications to see more.